One of the things that I keep going back to is that there's this um, incredible aesthetic beauty to the work, but each and every image is layered with all of these provocations around history and culture, and it makes us imagine the future differently, enter the past differently. There's, there's so many different conversations that go way beyond what you just see on, on, on the surface, but what she is doing on the surface is, of course, absolutely, absolutely stunning. So it's my great pleasure today to introduce you to Lina Iris Victor, who will... <laughs> So Renee said that you know we started talking about the show about two and a half years ago, and that would be about accurate. And since then, I did a show at the Orleans Museum of Art last year, which was the first institutional show I did on a very particular body of work, and you'll see some of those works upstairs. I really was just trying to investigate what you can do when you strip everything away, and you're just using the most essential materials. And for me, black is the most essential of all of the values or colors in the spectrum. But then. Also, um, gold has always had a very storied history throughout humanity, and um, and you know you, you study civilizations going back, obviously the Egyptians, <coughs> Mesoamerican cultures, Southeast Asian cultures, and you understand the kind of gravitas gold has always had in society. Um, we've always had very loud type of like relationship with gold. You've always looked at gold as being otherworldly, as being um, you know from. As, as being likened to the sun on earth. And only recently, and more recently I say, more contemporary society in the last, give or take, two to three centuries, have we kind of really had a very different relationship with gold in that now we look at it as a monetary kind of tool or some kind of method to kind of uh, measure our wealth, our, our worldly wealth. So that's, uh, I would say, about four bodies of work down here. Uh, we have the Dark Continent, we have the Constellations, the arc structure and materia prima, and these kind of comprise all of the different aspects of the black and gold works. Also, the dark continent, this is the first time they've ever been shown together like this. So, before I, I mean, I've done a show with 12 or you know, variation or selection of them, but for this show, we thought it was very important to bring together the entire suite of works. And up until the time when we first discussed this show, there were only 24. And so I created another 24 to make 48 for this show in particular. And all the big ones in there as well, but in terms of the small ones that were part of the series, these were kind of, those are, the larger ones are kind of, um, I guess they're unique in that they, they are, the, the scale of these works is what makes them, I think, very special, because I work in such large scales usually, and these works, you have to encounter them in a very intimate way and you have to get close and personal with them. And large works, you don't, I mean, you can do that, but you don't have to. So this had a very different kind of purpose in terms of how I wanted viewers to engage with the works. I didn't go to school to learn how to be a visual artist. I did college in terms, I studied, I studied film and photography, I studied other disciplines. Um, but when I do speak to students now at schools, at, at art schools, like I, I'm always I'm interested in the fact that they are basically given everything to pick from, like every kind of color you can imagine, every kind of material, and they're, they're then told to whittle down and then find their, their thing, right? Find their style or find their voice from everything. And that's very difficult to do. Um, I think it's, <coughs> for me, the difference is I didn't go to art school is that I didn't really have everything at my disposal. What I did have was my ideas. And then I, with those ideas, I figured out what I needed to use to make those ideas happen. So it was completely opposite in terms. So it wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't too overwhelming for me. It was like I knew what I wanted to say and I knew the things I could learn how to do and to manipulate and then I used those very specific things. And just in general, what I do is so, the materials I use are so limited that it really does, in many ways, limitation actually births much more creativity <coughs> having too many things at your disposal to work with. Um, so I do really tell artists like to actually limit themselves, like give yourself restriction and then see what you can do with a restricted thing you're working with, whether it's materials or colors or whatever. Um, you'll find you'll, you'll hone in on a, on a conversation much faster. Um, not to say that I think style is great. I don't know if I think that having a style is great. I think that having a clear voice is great. Um, and, and so yeah, it was the other way around, but I think I do, I do say that a big part of how that happened is because I didn't go to art school.
This particular hue, you know, obviously people will um, always attribute it to Yves Klein, um, but this particular blue obviously existed before Yves Klein, and I love Yves Klein, but <laughs> it existed before him. You can find it all over, you know, Central America, you can find it all over, um, okay. you know, North Africa. I mean, it's like, it's Majorelle blue is the actual, the actual um, color, and uh, it, I just found that it has a very particular frequency and it has a very particular kind of energy and it, it forces people to slow down and it forces you to reflect and it kind of, it's, uh, I, I mean it's a magical color. I think that it allows you to kind of transcend yourself for a while and especially when you're in the space by yourself. It can't be extrapolated from American history and it still is very, very important to know today given where Liberia is and its relationship with America. Um, the colors as well. And the color schemes, the blue, the red, the white, is also speaking to American and, and uh, Liberian kind of uh, cross-pollination and, and shared histories. And then the last thing I see about his work, his work is, the, is the character of the Libyan civil. So the figure that kind of speaks, that, is, that migrates through this work was taken from uh, Greek mythology. And, there was a prophetess called the Libyan Sybil. The Libyan Sybil was a character who uh, was told to be able to foresee ill-fated futures. So she would basically be the harbinger of doom, if you will. And, um, and ironically, during the abolition of slavery, she, her character was exhumed by a lot of writers and artists. Uh, if you go to the Met or the High Museum in America, I'm sure they're I'm sure there's a sculpture here somewhere. You'll see images of the Libyan civil, sculptures of the Libyan civil, and you'll always know her by the fact that she's kind of lounging. She's very uh, forlorn. She'll usually have her, ha her head in her hand. And, uh, and that character became a very big, important, or became, again, another big, important character during the abolition of slavery. Uh, Harriet Tubman was always like, a, 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 like it likened her as well. And, um, and so I thought it would be interesting, since she was so much part of this moment in history, to put her back into this story um, and, and, and you know, create this kind of conduit that's kind of the storyteller throughout these works, showing and revealing the certain things uh, with each one, with her body, with, her, with what she's wearing, uh, with her hair, with her way she's gazing or what she's gazing at. All of these things kind of are... are um, I guess creating a sense of, of, um, of presence and space with the work as well. There's 48 copies of this limited edition book in this limited edition book which is signed and um, hand gilded with a gold leaf on the cover and numbered and inside the book is um, an extract of about 15,000 words of this conversation called The Value of Blackness. So in a slightly long-winded way, that's why the title of our conversation tonight is um, The Value of Blackness. Thank you.